All right, we're going to move on then to a record-breaking, record-setting team. Oh, LAFC? No. Seattle. Wow. Breaking I, records in the wrong direction. No. They, CONCACAF Champions League. Oh, I thought you were insinuating because they didn't make the playoffs for the first time. No, no, no. That's ending a good record, something the Red Bulls don't know how to do because we just keep getting to the playoffs. <laughs> Massive Arsenal vibes, by the way. Yeah, that's right. We'll take we'll take fourth place. We'll take seventh place every year. That means we're still in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, um, pretty much. I've only got one player on my list here as a as a probably should be getting looks right now, um, and that is Nuhu Tolo. How this man doesn't after every international, you know, game that he plays, the only thing that I hear is. God, this guy's a beast. This guy's a beast. Can't wait to watch him lock down this player, that player, this player. And yet I haven't heard a single word about where he's going next. Now, granted, I'm, don't get me wrong. I love having him in the league. But, I mean, how are you not you're not getting any looks out of that, you know? Um, this team, Seattle, after the year that they just had, they're looking to add players, not subtract. So I don't expect them to be massive sellers at the deadline. But um, it's just something to keep in mind. And then who's your one to watch? I've got a. I've just got the entire pipeline that they brought up over the last couple of years. So, <laughs> Danny Leva, uh, Obed Vargas, Josh Atencio, uh, Baker Whitting, Chu, Double A Air Tevez, any one of those guys given proper time in this system will ball. And when they do, they'll get looks. So, anybody in that in that you know class of eighteen to twenty one year olds who are going to absolutely show up. But I'd, I'd say if I had to pick one, it'd be Obed Vargas is probably the closest to be the next guy out. So, I also have New Who on my list. I 100% think that New Who could make a jump to a European team. Um, and then, youngster wise, I've got Danny Levo, Bed Vargas, Baker Whitting. Um, I think I'd probably want to see a little bit more consistency in game time from Leo Chu or Josh Atencio before I'd say that they could make the jump to Europe. Not that they couldn't make it, but. Uh, I think it would just be helpful in terms of them getting like a good move to Europe rather than just getting stuck in like a youth team. Mm -hmm. I had like uh, I had actually a surprising number of players that I think could make a jump to Europe right now. And I think you're going to probably disagree with a number of them. Um, and I'm not saying they can move to a top level European team. They couldn't probably do it in the Prem. I would say more championship level, like maybe low level France or Germany or Maybe they go to Belgium. Belgium seems please, to be a hot spot for us. Please just give me the clip of you saying Jordan Morris to the Premier League so I can get TikTok riled up, please. <laughs> no, no, but Jordan Morris is on my list, but he's not going to the Premier League. Come um, on, you're telling me that you're telling me that Man City couldn't pair him up with Erling Holland and he wouldn't have at least twelve assists. Listen, all I'm saying is if Jordan Morris and Erling Holland were on the field together right now, they would have at least twenty goals combined between the two of them. You're not wrong. Yeah, well, I mean, that's statistically a fact. Okay, so I said, so I said Nuhu, I said Jordan Morris, I said Ariaga, I said both Roldans, and that's it. I think that they can make a move to like a Belgian team or like a Dutch team or a championship team and get starting game time. So, so what I want to be cautious of is equating a move to Europe with being a step up. And we talked about how the championship is a is a sideways move. I think Belgium's a sideways move. Um, so the way I always saw it was like how if this player made a move, would it be a step up for them? Because yeah, we're going to send people over to Belgium and they're going to pay the money for it because we can't. But the way I always looked at it was like, are they going to improve their their career that way? I don't know if Ariaga does that. I don't know if Alex Roldan does that. At this point, I don't know if Jordan Morris does that. And I, I think Christian Roldan might be the only person there who could make a lateral move and improve his, you know, his career. Like Alec Roldan is already captaining El Salvador. Moving to Belgium doesn't make him captain El Salvador more gooder, right? 
No, but it Xavier might Ariaga, Xavier Ariaga doesn't start in the center back line for Ecuador. We saw that in the World Cup. Him going to Belgium or the Championship and getting less, you know, he got 2,100, 2,200 minutes this year. Him going to Belgium, cutting that in half, doesn't jump him over as to um, uh, Hincapié, right? Jordan Morris, he, I mean, 2,300 minutes, seven goals, two assists, World Cup appearance, right? Putting him in Belgium isn't going to make him score 17 more goals against Guam because that's the only other chance he's going to get with a national team. Do I think they could? Sure. I think a ton of people could make that move. How about Rusnak could make that move? Raul Rui Diaz could make that move, but does it matter? And that's the way I always thought. So. So I want to say a couple of things. One, I think that at the moment, yes, I do think Belgium and places like Scotland and the Netherlands are better leagues than MLS. So I don't think it's a sideways move for them. Belgium? Yeah. I, I'll give I'll give you the error to visa. Scotland and Belgium, no shot. Then why are young players from MLS moving to Belgium to develop more? No. It's always money. How long have we been doing this show? I tell you this every well, time. Well, you can go move to Belgium to get more attention from other European teams and to develop more because now they're playing directly. If if you're moving like Mark McKenzie or Cameron Carter Vickers, you're now playing against te- against these bigger teams in European competitions where they're like forced to have their eyes on you because you're playing directly against them versus playing in MLS where you're just playing against other American teams or other Mexican teams or occasionally some Canadian teams. But mm-hmm. if you move to Europe, even if you're saying the talent level isn't better in Belgium, which I disagree. I think the, the talent level in Belgium and Scotland is better at the top than it is across. Name, name the name the bottom name the bottom three teams in Scotland and Belgium right now. Don't Google it. I don't care about the bottom three teams. But, They're not moving to the point. bottom you're, three teams. What you're doing is you're comparing the top you're you're saying the top four teams in Belgium and the top two teams in Scotland make up for the rest of their crappy league. And it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. Now, here's what I'll tell you. I agree with the way that you're approaching it in in the sense that they're getting better exposure. Yeah. Because they're playing in, in your Euro- European competitions, right? They're playing against you know low level prem sides and and the the mid tier um german sides right i'll give you that because you're right then they have to look at them. but it doesn't mean that they're instantly going to get a better right if you put jordan morris and and xavier ariaga on the third or fourth best team in belgium maybe they're getting starting minutes and maybe they're getting seen by other clubs not everybody's a mark McKenzie. just saying Hold but on, you I'm can't sure. make the you can't make the distinction that just because Scotland has two good teams that the rest of their clubs are going to instantly be you know look at Chris Mueller is a perfect example he moved to the third best team in Scotland and was back within a year and a half because it because if you're not in the top two you're not anything okay guy who googles tell me what you're looking at. <laughs> and we can't stay on this forever because we need to move on. We are four teams in, three teams in. First of all, Hibs is not the third best team in Scotland. That's what I was first Googling. They're Where are they? In, they're in eighth right now. Well, that's my point. Well, he also moved on a free. I don't know. It didn't seem like it was like, oh, we're what scouting is, him to grab him matter? from Orlando. It was like, he's available. Let's take him. What does the price tag matter, though? It I doesn't. Listen, not if, for, this, not t- for this argument, it doesn't. If you're moving to a Celtic or a Rangers or like a Genk or an Anderlecht, like I said before, you're going to have more eyes on you. I think from a national team perspective, which I don't think that's the end all be all. The goal shouldn't be, oh, I need to make a move so that I can only solely for the purpose of I need to play in my national team. It's to advance your career and ultimately either one, get paid more or two for the prestige of playing for better teams which you're going to do if you're playing for some of the higher level teams in Scotland and Belgium, because if you take a Cameron Carter Vickers and you stick him on LAFC and he's playing week in week out, he's going to look great, but he's playing on LAFC versus you do the same thing where he's playing in a Celtic team right now. 
that looks unbeatable, he's going to have way more eyes on him and way better clubs coming for him because he's doing it on a better team that has more prestige and has more, what's the right way to say it? More experience with sending out better quality than MLS who's done it on a smaller sample size. Okay. There's more Here's, faith in the Celtic product than in the LAFC product. This could be an episode all on its own because you're getting very Euro snobby on me and I will put you in your place. But here are my last two points. First off, Cameron Carter Vickers never stepped foot in MLS. I know it's he not didn't. A fair, I know not he a fair didn't. comparison. It's not. He came from he came from Europe. Not a fair comparison. Secondly, how many of the guys that you just listed are making significant impacts at the Celtic, at the Rangers, at the Anderlecht, at the Ganks. Xavier Ariaga is not doing it. Lewis Morgan's better than Jordan Morris, and Lewis Morgan got let go from Celtics. So Jordan Morris is not making a Celtic team. But yeah, Lewis Morgan got let go years ago. Guys can revive being, their they, careers. They saw nothing in him, and he's better than him right now. So they're not going to take somebody who's worse than a guy they let go. Who's that one? Christian rolled on, maybe. Christian, you could stick Christian rolled on in a top team in Belgium, and I think he'd be okay especially when you're giving him his 15 minute cameo every seven games, because that's the only way he can play. And who was the last one? Alex rolled on. Alex rolled on. Wouldn't get past Michael Murillo at under like stop. <laughs> he could get past Michael Murillo. At no, he couldn't. What are you talking? Oh my God. We're moving on. I'm not doing this out of your mind. All right. Yeah. Let's move on. We still have like 25 teams to go. Through. Yeah. Because you keep going on with dumb stuff. Stop saying dumb things. We can just get through this. All right, hold on. I have to pause again.